distinguished guests, delegates, cohorts, students, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Kim's College of Nursing, I, Mary Sebastian, Vice Principal, deem it my honor to welcome you all for the international webinar on Exhaustion to Extraordinary, Federate to Upgrade Mental Health. It is extremely delightful to have our esteemed speakers and guests with us this morning. Without further ado, let us begin with today's event. I now take the solemnity to extend my genial welcome to our pro principal, Professor N. Sheila, for unveiling the theme. Good morning all. I am happy to greet each and every one through this platform. Let's know and understand the theme of today's webinar. About 450 million people live with mental disorders that are among the leading causes of ill health and disability worldwide as per WHO's report 2001. One person in every four will be affected by a mental disorder at some stage of their lives while mental, neurological and substance use disorders exact a high toll on health outcomes, accounting for 13% of the total global burden of disease, according to WHO 2012. The World Health Organization 2018 states that every 40 seconds, someone dies by suicide. This bleak picture necessitates that we ensure mental health is prioritized now, more than ever before. Psychosocial support and mental health national plans need to address the mental health consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on citizens. Mental health must be an integral part of universal health coverage. Nobody should be denied access to mental health care and hence the theme mental health for all, greater investment, greater access. We all know this is the theme of the year 2020 given by World Federation of Mental Health. Mental health is a human right and it's time that mental health is available for all. Quality, accessible primary health care is the foundation for universal health coverage and is urgently required as the world grapples with the current health emergency. We therefore need to make mental health a reality for all, for everyone, everywhere. I believe this call to action will be strengthened through, all, through our alliances, collaborations and partnerships to ensure that investment in mental health is prioritized, particularly during this time within the context of COVID-19. It is also a time in which we can capitalize on this displayed by individuals and communities to be responsive during a time of crisis as well as a time of great reflection and finding creative solutions and interventions to facilitate a mental health response in an emergency context despite social distancing or lockdown. We invite you to join our call to action in highlighting the need for greater investment in mental health, particularly during this global health emergency and thereafter. World Mental Health Day isn't simply a one-day event, so let's mental health to ensure that no one is left behind. In accord with this, the theme for the day, Exhaustion to Extraordinary, Federate to Upgrade Mental Health, serves the purpose in enhancing the mental health of the people through this webinar. Let's raise awareness in the global community to take action and to create lasting change through the messages we promote. 
together we are stronger and together we can make a big difference all over the world thank you Thank you, ma'am, for enlightening us with the theme for the day. It is my pleasure to welcome our honorable chief guest, Dr. S. Manimala Rao, Director of Medical Education Academics, Kim's Hospitals. Ma'am pursued her MBBS in 1966 from Osmania Medical College, Hyderabad, and diploma in anesthesiology from London in 1968. She is a doctorate in medicine from Ames, New Delhi. Earned her FCCM in 1988 and FICCM in 2014, New Delhi. Madam worked in various positions as consultant in Iran, assistant professor at Gandhi Medical College, Hyderabad, associate professor, professor, HOD and dean at NIMS hospitals and director critical care Yashoda hospitals Hyderabad, India. Her honorable positions include President RSCAP, Emergency Medicine and State Chapter ISA, Vice President ISA and Critical Care, Chairperson at Mohan Foundations, published 100 papers in national and international journals, editorial board member for many national journals, conducted many national and international conferences and workshops. To mention Few of her accolades, Padma Bhushan Dr. P. Sivareddy Endowment Award, honoring distinguished medical men for the year 2000, lifetime achievement in cardiac anesthesiology in 2008, anesthesiologist of highest reputation ISA, swims Bapu felicitation for contribution to specialty in 2011 by ISCCM, best teachers felicitation and NBE award of excellence for Best Teacher ISA, Lions International Award, President's Appreciation Award ISA 2014 as anesthesiologist who contributed immensely for the development of speciality at Madurai Tamil Nadu. Madam is passionate towards nursing profession and has immense love for teaching. A truly dynamic personality who defies her age. Over to Dr. Manimala Rao. Dr. Manimala Rao, ma'am, please uh, unmute yourself. Unmute the audio, please. Hello. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah, okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. See? Yes. Yeah, I know. Now it's uh, Yeah. Better. Okay. 
good morning and it is indeed my pleasure to talk to you all on this one important subject that is mental health for all um and i really admire all the people who have come together and to talk about this forum in this particular forum talk about this particular aspect of our uh, health whether physical or mental mental health is almost same or even sometimes more than the physical health with various uh, problems which we uh, envisage from the childhood the stress which we have the genetic ends which we can get the mental health is life mentally healthy we can be physically healthy so a positive attitude a mental health requirement for every one of us most important is in these days of the pandemic which has become very unprecedented there you have to maintain the distance you cannot go and talk to people meet them go out to enjoy and get your stress busted by talking to a group of people and enjoying your life when all these things are not there it is pretty difficult but till to the younger and also the older and the children and to the professionals who are putting themselves at risk by wearing all the ppe and working in that is no joke at all people do not understand even when you ask them to wear a mask for a little while people say oh it is very difficult to breathe so we as professionals and you as nurses all the time you are at the patient end so you are putting your family at risk so that is in your mind and you are away from the family and that is in your mind you are not able to meet them well as you used to and the most important for a mother is when she goes home her child comes running she can't pick up immediately she has to take a bath take everything and then so it is very very unnerving for anyone who is working in this profession more so nurses will spend a lot of time with the patient and they don't go out of the either icu or the ward and around them so at these time taught us many things that we are you know really not looking after nature that is the reason all these things have come apart from that it has also shown us life is more important to live than just you know flittering away so these are some things and most important now to keep our ourselves mentally happy we can do how we are focusing on our you know uh, patients king in the stress and how we are not able to even show our identity or even smile so that is important for you to understand how much pressure or stress it puts on you so for this reason and i am very happy that this particular aspect has been taken taken up because each one of us at some time in our life we are stressed and you feel depressed so that is the time when you have to understand talk to people and get over these things and with a little bit of counseling you can bounce back so never think mental illness means it's pitchy it's not so it is just a some sort of a hormones which do not release exactly on that particular time with us think in that way it is as good as any physical illness so i will wish all of you a very well no more about the any experts are going to talk to you and then go ahead and thank you for asking me the chairperson or whatever the patron today and give you something of over a mind life which i have lived with so many stresses thank you very much thank you ma'am it's indeed an honor to receive your wishes on this special day i now hand over the program to ms archana more professor kims college of nursing who is the moderator of the day to take over the proceedings thank you once again
Greetings and Namaste to all the delegates who are present over here and attending this wonderful webinar. Uh, it's my privilege to be a part of this wonderful team. I know you are all waiting for the presentations by our esteemed speakers today. So let me now take the immense pride in introducing to you one of our dynamic speakers, Dr. Sujay Lakshmi Devaraya Samudram, Assistant Professor, Department of Nursing, Durham, North Carolina, USA. Madam has over 41 years of experience in teaching. She taught the students from different levels and at various locations across the globe. Madam has earned her BSc nursing degree from Government College of Nursing, Hyderabad. She did her master's and MPhil in nursing from Rajkumar Amritkaur College of Nursing, New Delhi, and Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing from Vinayaka Missions University, Salem. She has also earned her Master's of Arts in Sociology, Social Anthropology, and also Psychology. Madam has done her two mini fellowships from the prestigious universities like Duke University and Stanford University. Her certifications uh, include effective college instructors from the Association of College and University Educators and the American Council on Education 2018. She holds the memberships in several organizations such as TNAI, Asian American Pacific Islander Nurses Association, National American Indian Nurses Association, Indian American Association of North Carolina, Pi Sigma Chapter of Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing. Her publications include mainly focusing on the areas of HIV and AIDS, health literacy, delirium prevention and management, emotional health and resiliency, technology and nursing, and care of the older adults in the local, state, national, and international conferences and seminars. Her awards include Faculty Mentor Award for Food Lion Feeds, North Carolina campus in 2018, an outstanding volunteer award for excellence in service and leadership in international education from North Carolina Association of International Educators in the year 2020. Dr. Devarai Samudram is very passionate about community service projects such as HIV and AIDS, homelessness, women empowerment, elderly care, mental health and hunger prevention projects. She loves to work with the students and enjoy sharing food, culture, knowledge, and skills. It's indeed an honor to have you with us today, ma'am. You may now take over the session on nurses as benefactors in propelling mental health. Thank you. Over to Dr. Sujay Lakshmi, ma'am. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you for the great introduction, Archana. I'm so happy. Thank you. Are you able to hear me? So we can hear you. OK, good morning, everyone. Now my time is uh, 12 o'clock, 12 midnight, 12 to 12.20, so 12.38 midnight. So I'm so passionate to share my skills and knowledge with you all. When I got this topic, I was wondering like what to look for. Like uh, there are two keywords, and uh, these keywords are very very effective: benefactors and propelling. Our uh, earlier speakers they mentioned about uh, you know a lot of information on uh, data about importance of mental health, the statistics, and all. I'm not going to touch those aspects, so I'll jump into the aspects like the skills. I want to start with the gratitude. I'm so thankful to the team's administration, Dr. Bhaskar Rao Garu, Manimala Garu, Raj Gopal Garu, and the organizers, Sheila ma'am, Mary Sebastian ma'am, Archana ma'am, Anusha, Anusha ma'am. I want to thank all the technical support people. They're awesome. You know, the technology is always needed. I'm, I'm hearing well. I hope all of you are able to hear and see me. So I want to thank all the participants. I'm seeing like so many of my friends and students and uh, other colleagues. Thank you, one and all. This is the best platform to meet each one of you. Thank you for taking time to attend this webinar to enrich your knowledge and skills. I don't have any disclaimer to 
This is my garden, so you can see the flowers. I'm going to use a lot of my personal, you know, stories and personal, you know, pictures and my professional information when I'm doing this presentation. What, if you see the goals, like what is it we want to achieve by attending this webinar? So after participating in this webinar, you all will be able to examine as nurses, what, are, what is our role in mental health? Whether you are working in emergency department or mental health facility or even outpatient department, every nurse has the responsibility. So we'll see different roles. Then we'll identify the skills. You know, when you want to take care of uh, physical health, like for example, if you are taking care of a diabetic person, you, you need to know like how to give insulin injection or how to do the blood test, um, glucose monitoring, you know, all that kind of kind of things. In case if you have to do for the psych, psych mental health, the skills are different set of uh, psych skills are needed. And I want to emphasize about Dr. Manimala, what she was mentioning, everywhere, you know, people need mental health, whether it's a home, community, school, hospital, everywhere, you, who's, wherever human beings are there, when the body is there, mind also exists and mental health is very much needed. My third objective is at the end, you know, you will be able to get like how you can be, you can serve as a benefactor in propelling mental health. So these are the three goals. With these goals, let's jump in. I want to acknowledge the resources, like whatever I have collected from this information is from American Psychiatric Nurses Association, American Nurses Association, and the Healthy Nurse and Healthy Nation. So there is a challenge. So if you go to this website, we can join in the challenge and we can participate. And American, uh, you know, Year of the Nurse, the pictures were taken from Google's, my personal uh, family pictures, my personal experiences. I consulted uh, psych mental health uh, nursing experts. So I collected this information from different sources, not only the websites and books and other uh, uh, evidence-based journals. Other uh, key areas are CDC. I think everybody should refer CDC and WHO. And uh, in US, we have like suicide prevention online resources, and we have SHAMSA. And especially in CDC, you have to look for the coronavirus. They talk about pandemic anxiety and other aspects. And the National Institute of Mental Health. So these are the uh, you know uh, government organizations where I will I was using my resources. Let's come to India. So where. When I was doing the Google search, I have seen so many mental health organizations. So I was really impressed. And uh, when I was seeing those, these are the mental health uh, like foundations of India. So you can see there are so many. So some of them will have like, uh, they talk mainly about the, you know, coronavirus. So there are a lot of organizations. So even I was looking at in Andhra Pradesh, there are so many organizations. So why I'm mentioning this is we have, you know, we can work with these organizations and uh, really bring a change. As uh, Dr. Manimala was telling, it's not pitchy, it's like uh, chemical imbalances. So what you have to do is like, we have to help people by overcoming this stigma and let people utilize the resources. So that should be our goal. As I mentioned, like one of our goal is like how to fulfill this, you know, benefactor role. So as a nurse, we have a tremendous responsibility to take care of ourselves, our families, you know, individual patients, their families and community. So you have to serve in different organizations in a leadership positions. Every hospital will have you know, the team of leaders. So as nurses, we need to represent, even in colleges, we need to represent, not only in uh, 
academic setting and uh, hospitals we need to take we need to be part of local organizations you know like uh, voluntary organizations you might have heard that uh, i was a member of uh, professional organizations and non professional also so what happens like when you are a member and uh, the, when there is an opportunity to take up the leadership role then you can bring some change in that organization you can implement you can plan implement certain projects and you can create really effective awareness and bring the change uh, i'll tell uh, one of my story so i'm a member of uh, like uh, we have a community engagement in uh, north kerala central university so as part of it uh, there was an opportunity where uh, we can uh, challenge with other colleges you know being in nursing usually we just uh, work up we focus on our profession so when the community organizing director asked me hey can you become a mentor for this so can you take up this project so i motivated one of my student and we took up the project and uh, you know i collaborated interdisciplinary team interprofessional team and uh, communities even international like in india and other places so we won 10000 dollars so that really has given me a boost so with that i was able to make more connections with the community so there are organizations like uh, we have temples here like uh, sai baba temple and uh, hindu hindu bhavan so so many temples are there churches are there so when i made connections so whenever there is a uh, work like for example there was a mental health awareness so we want to uh, create some flash some uh, greeting cards like maybe for uh, thanksgiving or maybe christmas time you know some people may not be able to uh, don't have any family member or you know they're staying alone in the nursing homes so we worked with the students student nurses and uh, we worked with the uh, children in the church churches like when they go to sunday school even uh, sai baba place they have volunteers so all the children we joined together we made a lot of cards you know uh, like greeting cards we went and delivered even to the duke hospital where uh, they have the cancer children were there so it shows like you know uh, many people will give food water those aspects but love and affection is one of the need for human beings i think we all aware that masters hierarchy of needs once you fulfill the basic needs the next one is love belonging next so when this when the child has seen those greeting cards we should see the appreciation how much they felt they felt so so joy and happiness even our students enjoyed doing those things so like that you know small projects we can take up and we can bring a lot of changes so that's why i'm mentioning as nurses we need not you know we we have to think outside the box and we have to come out from that you know um come out of the those uh, circles and work with the community so i'm just giving some of my examples other roles are take up the legislative member role uh, that that day i was listening like one of our uh, college nurses college of nursing uh, graduate uh, ms rajeshwari she is uh, competing for she is uh, for the member of legislation please we need to support our nurses so once she once she uh, you know gets the position if some some of those uh, you know needs are there we can represent she can represent us you can see in this picture like in us nurses are very very active they take up the roles and uh, they will be sitting in the legislation so always they uh, come out with the projects they go and uh, take up those projects and work on and even in the hospitals we have to work on those quality improvement projects and carry out different research projects so as a nurse we can work as a researcher caregiver educator advocate so you can see there are so many varieties of uh, experiences we can we can take up those things so we can serve in the private sector non government and government wherever you are you know lead where you stand so that should be our motto and nurses have the ability so we can just show the difference in the world you all know that nurses are the most trusted professions and we are the ones who are in contact with the 
patients and healthcare professionals. So we have to come out and speak and take the lead. So we have seen like where all we can go. Let us see the second objective. Like what are the special skills need as site nurses? I think you all agree with me. The first and foremost is listening skills, observational skills, interprofessional communication skills. Excuse I think me, Hello. Ma'am, sorry to interrupt you. Are you sharing any slides? Oh, I'm sharing. Yeah, can you please share the screen? Oh, I'm sharing, okay. Yeah, we're not able to see your slides, so. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Okay, give me one minute. I started sharing. See now, okay. One option is there. Share option is there. Okay, okay. Uh, give, give me one minute. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you able? Are you able to see the screen? Yeah, ma. Put it in uh, sharing mode, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Give me one minute. I, I'm really sorry. Thank you very much for stopping me. Okay, are you able to see it now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm so, sorry. Yeah, please. That's so, all right. Please. You know, my I spent a lot of time and then made beautiful slides. So, thank you, thank you very much. So, you can see these are the legislations. Where, which slide are you seeing? Are you seeing this uh, legislation slide? Uh, how to fulfill this role. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. This is the one that I want to show you. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, I'm moving on. So you can see the nurse, nurses can take up the leadership role in the legislation. So that way we can, we have more control and power. So we are talking about special skills and we all agree that listening is one of the best skill, communication skill. So we need to have good interpersonal skills, observation skills, Ethical skills, ethics. That's why we are most trusted people. Compassionate, good judgment, and one need to have health literacy skills. So that way we can educate the community. Other skills are whenever there is a problem, we should be able to solve the problem. And uh, in uh, community health, even in uh, psych mental health, always we talk. Offer yourself, like for example, even if a depression person they doesn't want to talk, you tell them, I'm going to sit here for some time. You go and just be with the patient. Even mere presence gives a lot of support. Other aspect is uh, our earlier speakers, they were mentioning about, uh, you know, she said bounce back, resilience. You know, we. As a healthcare personnel, we are exposing to so much of you know, stress, trauma. So we need to bounce back and we need to show our empathy. And we need to have the evidence-based research skills. Good and this, this one, I love it. We need to know, I think sometimes, you know, message, uh, always we have the debate, like message uh, nurses, they tell, hey, we do all these skills. What do you do? You don't have much. So as a psych person, I just tell them, hey, you all do with hands, but we do with the mind and the hands, both. So good understanding of theories of mental illness. One need to understand why the disease is occurring. Then we should be able to tell people like what are the causes and how it is affecting. So you can see in these pictures, like, you know, the caring, just I want to share some of those aspects. You know, sometimes uh, like whenever you have parties, we get a lot of flowers and other things. So we have uh, a place called Durham Rescue Mission. So one time, you know, they were, if you keep it in your house, the flowers, you know, you only you are the only person will be watching. So we, we got a lot of flowers uh, on the flower bouquets and all. So I said, let me take them and go and give to those rescue mission where there is a homeless population. When I took those things, people were jumping around and they came and said, Wow, such beautiful flowers. Can I smell them? Can I touch them? Can I have one that, one of that? So, you know, they said, I love it. So, you know, I, I thought, my God, what a simple action, what I did. 
instead of keeping in my office room, just give to someone where so many you know people can see it, they can enjoy and cherish it. You know, they can recollect their own good old days. You know, they were uh, mentioning, hey, I was working in a flower uh, florist shop, and then I was doing all these things. So they went back to their memories. Did you see this picture where the emotions? So many times, you know, as psych nurses, and we tell, reflect, reflect back, reflections. I always tell my students, hey, write the reflections. So what's going on with you? What's the emotions? So don't put up inside. Don't boil it inside. It burst out. So we have to process our emotions. So don't, you know, make them periodically take reflections. Sometimes I tell my husband also, I'm a little bit restless. Something is bothering me. Let me take a break. Let me think it over. So I take a break, relax. Maybe something unconsciously it may be bothering. Then sometimes I need to ventilate or I need to take a break. So seek help from your support system. It can be your immediate family or your colleagues or maybe your distant relatives or friends. So take, you know, seek advice, support. So one important thing as nurses, we are burning out. So we need to avoid that stress and burnout. Now we call it as a compassionate fitting that we should be, we should not get into that and we should be careful for that. So look at the other special skills. This is what I tell everybody. You know what I do before I start my, my job? I sit in my car. Maybe I love, to eat, I love eating, uh, you know, bendakaya, bendi. I sit in my car and then look at the my garden. I eat, I eat that. So I, I take a video and tell them, hey, I'm getting my energy. So I'm ready to go to my school. So I send that picture, you know, that video to my friends. I tell, that, I tell them, hey, I'm getting my energy. So I'm spending some time for myself, which makes me happy. So before I get into my, you know, my job, I'm trying to, you know, relax and keep my mind calm. So I may have to start a little early so that I'll be able to reach there. So I'll start my job with, you know, balanced mind. So we need to develop a kind of, you know, habits, you know, tiny bits of habits changes so much, you know, our life. It becomes like a ritual. So what I do, once I finish my job, when I come there, sometimes my husband will be asking like, hey, where are you? I said, I'm sitting in, 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 our, in, our, in, in the driveway inside. I'm talking to someone. Maybe I'm talking to my daughter. And before I get inside, I want to spend some time maybe with my daughter or my family. So he said, why don't you come inside? You know, once I go inside, my mind will be, I need to do, okay, this work, I'm cooking, cleaning, all that kind of things. So I don't want to jump into the work. So I take some time for myself. So we need to do these kind of things. It can be five minutes, 10 minutes or whatever it is. So that way you'll be able to focus on your work. You know, in this picture, you can see uh, the dog, he is my daughter's dog. His name is Romeo. So Romeo will be always waiting. So when you open the door, he'll be there. he will jump in. So I spend some time with him and I just shout, scream, all that kind of things. So I sing a song for him. So you know his name. So it's so much fun. So one need to do that. Otherwise, what happens? I think all of us, uh, you know, I've seen people like once they go, my God, I have to do the dishes, I have to do the laundry. You know, all the household works, everything comes into your mind and you'll be really bottled up. Then when children come and ask something, we may be showing our anger or, or maybe, you know, show our frustration or something. So go inside the house with a pleasant mind by spending some time. And one need to have values. So what kind of values? These are there, these are needed for uh, uh, even uh, for regular nurses, I'm emphasizing more on psych nurses because, you know, we have to respect, maintain the dignity. Sometimes, you know, the patient with mania or patient with anger, you know, the way they behave, they don't have any control. So we need to show our dignity and respect. So we need to provide quality of care. We need to be committed. So again, I'm emphasizing about compassion, empathy, and very important thing, 
in a team you know healthcare is provided by a team we are a part of the team so include the patient i think patient family all the healthcare team everybody is equally important so value everybody's potential believe in others believe in everyone believe in you, yourself work as a team then you can achieve high quality of care i saw so i got the some pictures so i like it one of the thing you know you see that healthy minds build healthy nation that's why we want healthy bodies are needed for healthy mind healthy mind is needed for the health, healthy body so these two are needed for healthy nations if people are sick mentally they may not go for job then economy will be affected or then may be crime you know lot of uh, you know uh, problems is happening now because people are losing the jobs so they are so much stressful so robbery and you know gun gunshots and so much you know rapes so many untoward effects are happening in the all over the world you may be seeing those aspects so when people chan channel those things you know their energies in a positive manner this kind of you know untoward uh, effects can be reduced the other one what i like in this picture is psychological first aid so even uh, like in us uh, in our college we try to give those uh, mental health first aid even in india they have those uh, first aid trainings so please look up maybe the nurse educators please make sure your students get this opportunity let them get your training so what they do is in the mental health first aid like everybody has to be trained for cpr you know basic life support like that for mental if so if you see an anger person if you see a depressed person how to give first aid so those are the skills you are going to learn so i strongly recommend every one of us whoever is in the nursing profession or healthcare field even common public we need to get that first aid training mental health first aid training so when you are working you see in this picture before you do serve somebody first you have to take care of yourself so self care should be the primary focus so for that purpose you have to dedicate some time for yourself apart from your you know sleeping different course and other things so make sure some of the activities which enhances your spirit i'm going to show you some of the videos which makes me happy I already i told you even eating one um, you know uh, lady's finger bendakaya which which has grown from a garden gives me so much happiness so that may be the one like what is my uh, you know enriching ones like spiritual ones or i sit there and uh, take one flower from my garden and put it in my head so that is i i get that happiness so whatever gives you happy we need to try out i'm going to share some of my videos there you will be think wow she did that so i'll give you the surprise wait for that so stay healthy so physical health and you not mention like you know regular exercise eating nutritious food practice your uh, you know your uh, mental health those aspects you know i remember uh, mahatma gandhi uh, thing you know practice before you preach if you are able to take care of yourself then it becomes like part of it when you are talking to someone then it becomes more authentic and more you know applicable other uh, areas are you know whenever we have some problem as i was mentioning burnout stress post traumatic all that kind of things so we need to take help from our employers so in us we have employers you know assistant program we have uh, i think in india also nowadays insurance is there so you have to get those aspects so what you have to do is be proactive don't wait till the crisis comes up seek out support always the immediate support system is your colleagues your supervisors as employee assistant program so please we need to seek out we should not have the stigma and uh, you know sometimes uh, we feel like what if other people think so avoid that and then seek support from counselors like in our call in in the university we have counselors even if there is a death of a you know colleague or family members always there are you know counseling because you know we have the grieving 
Grieving should be normal grieving. If it is delayed grieving or dysfunctional grieving, it has a so much ill untoward effects, bad effects. So we need to avoid. Nowadays, uh, people are scared to go to the doctor's office until unless there is an emergency. So what you have to do, we have to maintain our uh, other health needs. Like for example, uh, if uh, somebody is having diabetes or hypertension or any of those chronic diseases, we can seek help from the telemedicine, telenursing. And uh, whenever we feel those, uh, you know, behavioral changes or maybe when you are aware of it, so we need to undergo some, you know, self-administered tools like depression tools or anxiety tools. They are available so we can just check those aspects. And very important one is attend this kind of webinar. So where you learn the latest thing like how to manage and all those skills you will be getting it. And uh, most of the agencies, they're providing special services. Like some of the hospitals I was listening, they give massage therapy. So massage therapist will be there. So they have a special massage area where, you know, when they are really working burnout, they go there and try to relax. And uh, many hospitals, uh, I was uh, hearing, like people come there and give a lot of, you know, food items and uh, some uh, special, you know, I, I was mentioning about greeting cards or maybe some, uh, you know, like uh, fragrances, uh, lotions and, um, you know, PPE, coffee breaks, so those kind of things. And people need to develop, uh, spend time in virtual celebrations. I emphasize, as uh, Dr. Maniwala was telling, like people are not going out. So that's why, you know, we are all inside. We all know that human beings are social animals. We love to talk and go out and see others. So in this pandemic, we need to use the virtual setup. So that way we can do it. We can, uh, just I want to share another uh, personal story of mine. When I show my family members, you can see I have 36 family members. I have five, seven brothers and, uh, you know, we are eight people. So my niece, nephew, and all. Recently, more than 16 members of my family got COVID positive. You know, sitting here and hearing the stories, first two people, then after suddenly seven members, then somebody said, oh, they have to be admitted in the hospital. And hearing all these stories, so much it was. So I said, okay, let's, uh, you know, spend some time talking to them. So we were doing like FaceTime, so all the members. So we were made, we were talking like fun things, like uh, childhood things. Instead of talking like, um, you know, the present things, we we're talking like how uh, all our childhood, you know, funny stories. And uh, we were showing our, about our stories, like how we spent and all. So we we're trying to cheer them up. So they were telling, hey, today we got Italy's. So my husband was telling, oh, you are lucky to have idlis. I don't know when my wife will make. That means he's giving a hint for me to make some idlis. So we were seeing those and, they, you know, their time was like morning. Our time is like midtime. So we were feeling so hungry. We want to have it. You know, today what I did, I just made some idlis and uh, came, came over here. Once I finish, maybe if I feel hungry, as a treat to myself, I'll go and eat idli as if I'm in India. So virtual celebrations. So this is a simple thing, please practice to relieve stress when you're working. You know, we all have to wa wash hands so many times. When you're washing, instead of simply washing, sing a song. You know, I think you heard that, you know, like in years we tell them, sing happy birthday song. So that way, you know, uh, you can count like 20 seconds. Do meditation, do chanting, you know, do praying. So that way your mind is focused on that. So you will be refreshing. Even in workplace, like we have a central regional hospital, it's a big hospital. It's uh, so many, the corridor is more than two for lungs. So usually our uh, staff, when there's a break, they go for a walk. So when they're going for a walk, they go along with a colleague and just we chat and we talk and we spend some time. And whenever you are doing it, you know, when, when uh, time permits, take friends. You know, you all can uh, go like that. And then, uh, this one, breathe. So we all can do it now. Take a breath, like a breath. Take it for four counts. You know, it gives so much relaxation. When you see your body is tightened up, try to relax. Give a smile and take a deep breath. 
and a lot of you know this uh, apple watches and other things you know that gives hey it's time to breathe so have those kind of devices so that helps or talk to each other or when you see your friends or somebody time to smile time to breathe just give them and then uh, you know many times we don't uh, like when you are working in a shift like 6 hours we we never try to go to the restrooms or uh, take a snack so please we need to take those aspects this is the other thing i really love it see when you finish your work when you are going home maybe you are going in a vehicle or whatever it is whatever is the mode of transportation even if you, when you are working so what they tell is you you had all the tension and other things so when you are uh, going uh, so take a you know turn you head to the right and left so this helps uh, you know that vagus now simulation so it breaks the stress so whenever you have a lot of stress try to do that and then what uh, it says is look at the sky so beautiful sky so sometimes uh, I, i like to go in the night and see the dark sky you know so calm and so soothing sometimes you see the blue beautiful color and uh, us we have lot of uh, you know seasons so where you see the fall time you know change in the colors change in the flowers so you can see those things even in india so look at the trees look at the birds so you know, many times what we do we look at the traffic we tell oh god this bus is not moving this person is honking so much you know we focus on those stressors not on the relaxation things please focus on those so that way you can get start you know uh, relaxation and uh, reduce the stress i love this you know look at this girl can all of you hug yourselves and say i love you i love myself please do that you know many times we tell hey i'm not doing this i'm bad i'm not beautiful we our mind says so much of negative things we beat ourselves so much we need to appreciate our own skills we need to hug ourselves so at home you know sleeping positive readings maybe a book or a quote or inspiration inspiring story you know talk to your parents own parents and ask them how did they manage they may tell all their uh, you know hard work so learn from that and look at this one we need to have that control like mindfulness i think everywhere this is the buzzword mindful eating mindful you know thinking mindful talking so meditation listen to your favorite music so before you go to bed don't look into the you know the tv or uh, watching all you know your cell phone messages sometimes you know some of the negative things may go there so it may affect on your sleep so listen to some nice music and then enjoy i have the habit of you know taking a shower before go- going to bed and uh, i just wash at least wash my hands and uh, feet you know i apply a little bit of lotion and then apply and then it's like i love jasmine so i apply a little bit and i keep my hand like this and sleep so when i'm smelling you know i just try to relax and you know get into sleep even if i'm sleeping for less number of hours i get deep sleep and i you know my body gets back to the normal to relieve stress all this is made by me you know usually people they think in america we never cook indian food we always eat pizza burgers all that kind of things no it's wrong we we make all these things all these home snacks you know i make my own sprouts you see this one is ragi mudde ragi so eat balanced food so these are the green leaves grown in my garden so you know why i'm stressing all these things I have a small kitchen garden and or if you don't have any space then you know you practice and you encourage your uh, clients also patients also you know put the seeds soak soak seeds in the what in the bottle they grow sprouts this is like microgreens if you look up microgreens you get those things so have a balanced diet so always i like colors like when i was in india i used to tell for the when i go for community health nursing long long back you need to eat like gender colors you know the food like white you know green orange like uh, carrots um, you know pumpkin that kind of thing so we used to make chickies and used to you know home demonstration other things you know i was talking about this uh, aromatherapy so what we did is uh, 
you know, to boost your, uh, you know, your spirit. Myself and my husband, we made all these uh, pouches. These are fragment pouches. You know, inside what they have? All our Indian spices. Put them there. Put little lotion and other things. Made small gift bags. So we were giving to our friends and uh, my students and other people. It's like, you know, showing like, hey, I care about you. So they were asking, what is this? So we had a conversation. So they said, wow, this smells so good. So they were, you know, they were feeling so happy. You know, these bags, they were made by my husband. So we had like, you know, purpose, like we both were sitting together. We were thinking, watching some YouTube videos, get those, uh, you know, ideas we were making together. So spending some time, apart from, you know, thinking about the pandemic, oh, when, when the vaccine will come, when this will, you know, this problem, Instead of that, you know, spend time something which is, you know, which makes you happy. You know, the josh, you need to work on that. And this is one of my favorite one. Every class I tell my students, come on guys, write three things, you know, what you are happy, what you are grateful for. Have you seen that when I started my webinar, I started with my gratefulness. You know, I thanked all of you and all the administrators and, uh, you know, the um, principal and other faculty. Give me one minute. Let me hydrate. You all can take water. Thank you. So gratitude journal. And I was telling mindfulness, like when some negative thoughts comes, catch them early. Turn it into positive. Like for example, when I was, uh, you know, um, working on, I was thinking, what if my power goes? Power in the sense, like my uh, internet. In America, usually power uh, cut is not much. So we are really grateful for that. And then internet. So instead of that, you know, I was thinking, even if it goes, you know, I can take my phone and then I can talk. Because, you know, I have worked on these things. I need not have this all these slides. I'm telling about my story and how I, make my mental health. I was talking about aromatherapy. So what I'm telling you is like mindfulness. When negative thought comes, turn them into positive. I think you all might have heard that when you look at the glass, don't look at the emptiness, look at the positive, like how much is full. Relieving stress, I'm not asking you to do all these big, big exercises. Even if you can stand with one leg, even like chair, chair yoga, even move, move your hands up and down, Whatever you can do, exercises, do it. Exercise is very important. And uh, nowadays, you know, we can do virtual exercises and happy hours. As I was telling, like I was sitting here and then talking to all my family members together. So nowadays, we have so many applications like WhatsApp, Google Duo, charting facility, and Skype. You may be having more, more so many. So this is my, you know, in front of my house, this is my vehicle and this is the, you know, uh, flower. So when it comes, you know, even I need not go out during the pandemic, you know, I just go in front and just look at the tree, look at the flowers, how blessed we are. And then you see here, this is what I tell, tell to myself, tell to others also, but tell to myself, yes, I'm unique, I'm smart, I'm talented, I am worth. I am special. I am valued. So I am a loving person. So look up those things. Always this positive thinking helps you. It gives a lot of energy. It, it, is, it acts like a shield. And to fight against the stress. So if I have to take a short walk, I, I don't go outside. I just go back to my backyard where I have seen my, I have a fig tree and some other, you know, plants. So I just talk to them and then spend time there. I have a few birds, sometimes rabbits comes. So squirrels come, so enjoy that. So you know the secret with whom I spend time? Look at my families. So many are there. So I spend time and talk talk to them and ventilate my, my feelings. So if I'm angry or something, you know, I just tell them, see, this is what happening. So she is my daughter and you can see all my brothers. So. So many people had the COVID. So thank God they all recovered. So we are really grateful to God and to all the doctors and other healthcare personnel or the support system who helped us, you know, during this. So 
what we can do is now COVID time, we may have uh, some time is there. So instead of going to a movie, have your own movie. So take out your album, your wedding or al album or your children's album. Just open it and, you know, talk those stories and, you know, share those things. So this is the one tip I want to practice with all of you. You know, this is what I tell, like, you know, uh, when you take, when you smell, you know, but whichever the flower you like, you know, smell it and blow it. Like you, you, you were 50th birthday or 100th birthday. How do you blow? So, you know, take, take the breath, hold it and slow, slowly, you know, inhale, exhale, blow it. If you do it, it really gives a lot of relaxation. So please try this. So I t we tell them like smell flowers, blow the candles. So that way, you know, people can do it. And uh, cognitive behavior behavioral skills, you know, positiveness, positiveness. So we need to be, we are so blessed that we are all sitting together and learning and talking to each other. We are able to see each other. Okay. Here is my other things. I try to revive my old hobbies. So you can see my daughter and my Romeo. So, you know, photography may be the, your hobby or stitching, you know, like sewing or maybe collection. So jewelry collection is one of my hobbies. So I just take it out and when, when we talk, hey, this jewelry, that day I got it. So I bring out the, all the stories. So you can have, like you can make jewelry or whatever skill you have, try to develop the skills and try to work on those skills. So this is happy hour. Sometimes when, when me and my daughter, like we, even like she is uh, staying in the same uh, city, but she is uh, living on her own. So when she is eating, you know, she will tell like, what are you eating? She will show me, hey, I'm eating this. So as a mother, you know, always I feel like whether she ate or not, even though she is grown up, but you know, mother's feeling. So she shares, hey, I'm eating this. So this is nice. So I make this food and give to her. So when I see the joy, wow, she likes tomato curry. Wow, this is so nice. So what you, what we can do is like, you know, cook something and share. It can be to your own colleagues and friends and other people. You know what I do? I think you would have heard that person was, uh, you know, my Archana ma'am was telling that I love cooking. So all my neighbors, I just give them. I share. So make them, you know, happy. So skills, whatever you gain from this, you know, I'm going to do this course, happiness course. I think you might have seen that from my bio, I'm a lifelong learner. So this is a, one of the, it's a free course. Um, I can share these resources to Arjuna ma'am so you can get all those things. This happiness, uh, happy course is wonderful. You can just do that. So whenever you see this wellness, there are nine dimensions. So I was thinking, wow. So most of the time we talk about physical wellness, emotional wellness, like mindfulness, financial wellness. During COVID time, yes, definitely we need this. Intellectual wellness, you know, we have to sharpen our brain. That way, you know, we had to use puzzles. So that way, you know, the physical, uh, you know, structure of the brain helps in prevention of the cognition, cognitive decline. Career wellness, you know, we need to progress ourselves, like uh, getting all the skills and other things. My other uh, wellnesses like social wellness. Socially, we need to talk to people and other things. And creative wellness. That's what I was telling, like, you know, singing, dancing. Many times we will not know, like, what kind of skills you have until unless you try and explore. Spiritual wellness. Spiritual is not like a, not a religious one. Like, for example, uh, I told you, like, when I eat one, uh, one bendakaya, I feel so happy and relaxed. You may be feeling like, wow, you know. So whatever makes you happy. And then other one is environmental wellness, like, you know, greenery, water, air, conserve energy. I can't tolerate if there is a, you know, unnecessary water wastage or, you know, any, any of those things. I'm going to show you something which you may think that, wow, they can do this. Can anybody recognize the location? It starts with T. It's in Andhra Pradesh. It's one of the famous places.
okay so when i can dance you also can dance so don't restrict yourself whatever makes you happy you know dancing singing always helps i want to show the last one i think when tiktok tiktok was there my daughter was telling because i, I was very strict mother i was uh, when she was growing up i was very strict now she is very i'm like a friend so you can see she taught me a little bit and uh, again this is a same thing that that one you know my earlier uh, one my husband was standing with the bottle myself and my daughter we said hey let's have fun let's do something weird so it was in the temple like you know tirumala where everybody was going there that's the place we were standing and just she said can you do this i said why not so i just did that so this one at home the same thing you know be happy so when you are happy mentally emotionally that makes you you know it gives lot of energies so find your uh, you know buddy spend time cheer up thank for your patience if you have any i'm sorry if you have any questions uh, let me know i think i finished my presentation i don't know how much time if i have taken more i'm sorry if you have any questions i'm welcome thank you very much madam that was really an enlightening session more lively i can say uh, as you know that uh, as nurses we are trained to be more disciplined responsible and you know much adhere to the work schedules and all but but really we forget to laugh smile sometimes and this session has really enlightened me personally to you know enjoy the nature and you know uh, love what you like uh, i mean what you do and sing and dance and you know make your life very much happier uh, because unless you are happy you are not going to make people happy around you um, more than questions i could see in the comment boxes you have a lot of uh, wonderful feedback given by the participants ma'am uh, they say it's a fantastic uh, session um, i just believe healthy mind will create healthy nation uh, one of the participant has a question for you madam uh, she says uh, she is Sab sabyata dubey she says mm -hmm. when i get angry i just don't want to do anything please give me some tips how can i make myself happy and keep and keep people happy around me okay yeah. uh, thank you for the question sabita you know anger is one of the common emotion you know when you when you are frustrated when some needs are not fulfilled that makes the person angry so good thing that you are aware of it when you are aware of your anger so try to leave that place you know don't react so take time so here we call it as a time out so when i get angry i just tell them hey i'll come back i'm not talking right now or i'm not going to do something so just go out from there as i said try to relax the body and the mind maybe take deep breath and then focus on something and then after some time like find out what make what made you angry look up the other like maybe the other person hurt at your feelings and once you are calm down when things are okay then you know if you want to talk to the person ask them hey i you hurt at my feelings this is what i felt then the person may answer to you hey this is the thing so the best way to do is there are some anger management uh, resources i can send to archana ma'am so that way you know you can get it so anger management even if you do google search you can see anger management there are courses are there you know some tips are there the best thing is aware accept that you have anger see i always use the three a's aware of it accept that you have problem and take action action is you know don't jump in don't shout scream some people if they get anger they break things you know sometimes when they get angry on the children they may not they you know they love them so much they, they don't uh, hit the children they go and break something 
or sometimes uh, you know you may be seeing mothers getting angry at the husband you know they may go and hit the children or sometimes you know we may i think you know in uh, in uh, psychiatry we talk about displacement atameda kopam dutameda chupichinatlu it's like that you know displacement from a less threatening object showing that so anger management courses are there so you can just reduce your anger thank you very much madam that was really wonderful uh, i think i should share the happiness course what you have suggested to all the nurses i guess that would really help them a lot um i especially like the way you said uh, nurses need to be mentally healthy in order to build mental uh, sorry in order to build healthy nation that's more important at this pandemic i could say and we all need to be very happy thank you very much ma'am wonderful uh, i now take lead in introducing ms r akshaya clinical psychologist rainbow children's hospital bangalore pro physio ms akshaya has pursued mphil in clinical psychology from manipal university and worked at chetna hospital begumpet hyderabad and care hospital banjara she is an expert in dealing with emotional and behavioral problems in children anxiety and mood disorders in adolescents and adults and personality disorders ms akshaya may now take over the session on enhancing mental health among children and adolescents over to you ms akshaya thank you thank you uh, ms archana um and uh, at the outset i just want to wish a good morning to everybody all the speakers uh some of the poignant points that dr manimala mentioned and ms sheila mentioned about um the current mental health, uh, health statistics right now by the who and uh, a wonderful uh, lively talk by uh, ms uh, sujay lakshmi before me about uh, a lot of uh, practical tips for uh, mental health professionals and um, i'm also glad to hear her family is doing fine in spite of all the problems that she's been through so it was really nice to hear that as well um so i would like to uh, right away jump to the topic and uh, ms archana please feel free, free to stop me if i have extended my time definitely dr akshaya definitely yeah. um can you all see my screen is the presentation visible uh not actually one I second see you but not the screen one second let me try again yeah is it visible now yes yes all right um so before we get into uh, talking about how can we enhance mental health among children and adolescents who we know are quite a vulnerable group uh, of population during this pandemic uh, i think before that we need to sort of understand the different areas and domains that are getting affected um i think dr manimala very beautifully spoke about even the small things that we're taking for granted like physical touch or uh, you know even uh, the ability to observe somebody's emotional expressions those are all things that have been sort of um, have restrictions now so uh, let's look at different domains that are getting affected and different areas that are influencing mental health in uh, you know uh, of children and adolescents and then i'll move on to how can we help enhancing mental health um there's a very interesting uh, study done by uh, a group of mental health professionals uh, in germany and uh, they were, they've written about the burden of uh, covid-19 on the entire uh, population and some of the key areas some of the key domains that are seeing uh, uh, as uh, core stressors are uh, definitely the pandemic in itself the covid infection the risk of covid infection um, and all the guidelines that have to be followed uh, with that is the social distancing and isolation lockdown uh, that has added additional stress to our daily living uh, 
it's causing us to sort of uh, restructure our lives to adapt uh, to the changes. Uh, one of the major areas is uh, economic concerns. So every pandemic, if you go back in history, every pandemic has had, uh, every pandemic or a global financial crisis has had a deep impact on the mental health. And I will get into that, uh, get into those details a little later. Uh, so economic burden and along with that, uh, the homeschooling and the closures of schools. So it's an additional burden for uh, children to adapt to this routine where uh, they have to cram up in their rooms or uh, dearth of physical space at home. Um, lack of technology, lack of uh, available resources to adjust. Uh, we're also looking at the larger level in terms of lack of medical resources, whether there's accessibility to uh, medical treatment on time, whether there's a proper social support system or a community where a family or uh, the child and the parent can fall back on uh, during a crisis. Now, if I just move ahead to looking at uh, some of the domains in detail, uh, we're looking at one of the major concerns right now that's affecting children and adolescents all over is the shutdown of schools. Uh, one of the major areas is there is a, a, a loss of uh, crucial academic time, education time. Some of them, uh, some of the schools have not been able to uh, conduct uh, online classes. Uh, there's dearth of uh, technology uh, in uh, houses to adjust to homeschooling. Uh, a lot of kids are lagging behind. Uh, uh, so. It's, it's a huge uh, uh, stressor for children at home as well as parents and families. Uh, along with that, there's academic stressors where eventually you're going to see that teachers are somehow trying to adjust to, uh, you know, finish off the syllabus and finish off the curriculum uh, and whether the child is also able to come to the pace of the teacher to complete the academic targets that are set by the school or the grade. Uh, one of the uh, other major areas is we're also seeing uh, the social development or the social factors that are getting affected. So uh, there's restricted access to peers for children. Uh, a lot of kids who, uh, you know, have a lot of uh, friends at school and there is a quality time of interaction with peers. That is something that's completely getting cut off. Um, the physical access to uh, uh, their friends and uh, classmates, that's completely getting cut off. Um, the other area, like I said, where uh, there is a major shift in our daily structure and daily routine. It's not only for adults, but also for children and adolescents, where, where you're looking at school time of, you know, good six hours, seven hours of school time or college time is absolutely taken away uh, from the child's 24 hour uh, routine. So you're seeing that it also affects their, so a daily routine where they have to get up on time, get ready, have their meals on time, reach the school, complete their study. All that is completely getting uh, affected and it, it's in, in some houses, it's absolutely a, a chaotic uh, scenario to adapt to the structure. So, or find a structure in uh, their daily routine right now. So school forms a, a very important uh, 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 element in forming a daily structure for a child as well. Uh, along with that, some of the other uh, areas are uh, especially for marginalized and vulnerable uh, groups uh, like minority groups or economic backward uh, groups, children belonging to these groups. You can also see where school was a main source of uh, midday meal for them. There was one entire meal that, that would be provided by the school and uh, parents could easily send their child to at least get that amount of nutrition that's also getting affected because of schools getting shut down and no proper system in place for that. Moving on uh, to the other major domain that is family. There are several factors that we need to be aware of when we look at children and adolescents in a family context. One is, like I mentioned before, the reorganization of everyday life. There's a map where you're also seeing 
hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, actually, yeah. clear. I'm sorry, there's a park at here, so I'll just continue. So there's also reorganization of everyday life, and it's also for adults where a lot of parents are working from home. Some of the parents have lost their jobs. Uh, there is a reorganization in our daily structure. Uh, and that's something that a family as a whole is trying to adjust around it. Talking about family relations and support, as my uh, esteemed previous speaker spoke about it as well, uh, a lot of times uh, when there was an immediate lockdown that was announced, uh, some of the families uh, were, were sort of almost uh, certain houses were overcrowded where there were a lot of family members, uh, extended family relatives visiting and they couldn't travel back. There's a dearth of physical space at home. Privacy is missing sometimes uh, uh, in certain families, which is uh, which is a nuclear family. There's a lack of extended. You can't reach out to your extended family uh, members uh, for support due to the lockdown. So it's working either ways that's affecting the family structure. Another important area which children uh, are are sort of exposed to is not only their uh, a risk of health problem to themselves, but also to close family members around them. So there's also an impending fear that they may lose somebody or, uh, 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 you know, their grandparent or a vulnerable family member who's already has having ailments and suffering uh, through medical uh, issues. We also need to look at grief and mourning. Uh, if at all there is a loss of a family member, whether the child is able to uh, cope with that loss and or showing uh, abnormal grief reaction, or um, that is also something that we need to be sensitive about. Uh, as well, uh, research studies that are showing about how pandemics in the history as well, a lot of common disorders that you do see is uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, a lot of anxiety disorders that uh, and adjustment disorders that come as a result of pandemic. So as a result of losing or a fear of losing a family member or a close uh, loved one, uh, there is definitely a high risk of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder or anxiety symptoms in children. The other factor that I was talking about in terms of financial and economic stresses, uh, if you look at previous studies and not just uh, pandemic related, if you're looking at studies related to the Great Depression or Great Financial Crisis, which was uh, in 2007, 2008, where there is no social isolation involved or social distancing involved, uh, in despite that, you're finding that just the economic burden in itself has a huge impact on the mental health of family members or uh, parents who are uh, the financial uh, providers uh, for the family. So it does have a deep impact on the mental well-being. Uh, there are a lot of studies that support that uh, uh, Certain family members get into are highly susceptible to getting into substance misuse or substance dependence. Uh, it's also uh, shown that uh, th there is increase in suicidal thoughts or suicidal behaviors, which definitely has an impact on the child or the adolescents that that adolescent that's staying in that family environment. Another important area that we are looking uh, into is also uh, about increased use of technology as these children uh, and uh, 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 you know family members are locked into the house. Uh, one source of uh, uh, outlet or some sense of engagement that they find is through technology. Um, and also another thing is with social distancing and isolation, I think technology has technology based reaching out to people and finding a connection via uh, social media is something that's helping people to feel connected. So there is an increased use of technology. Even this is an example where we're having a webinar through uh, 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 you know, connecting people from all over the world. So in, there is an increased use of technology, but at the same time, we need to understand that there are huge risks involved for children and adolescents here as well. 
um, a lot of uh, adolescents, especially, uh, especially who are uh, unmonitored at home, um, are not supervised in terms of what uh, online content are they browsing or are exposed to, they are susceptible to cyberbullying as well. There are also instances of uh, them accessing pornography uh, sites and then also showing uh, uh, maybe uh, sort of dependence on porn as a coping mechanism. So these are some things that we need to be sensitive about and aware as well. Last one is uh, definitely uh, very highly vulnerable uh, groups where there are uh, children who are in families where there is physical abuse involved, there's neglect involved, there's domestic violence, there is marital conflict between the parents, or there is a ch there's child abuse, there's ongoing child abuse. Uh, imagine due to the lockdown, due to uh, uh, social uh, distancing, uh, these families which are already having trauma and which are already going through adverse events uh, are exposed and uh, are more vulnerable to uh, trauma and severe distress. So imagine these children who do not have the accessibility to step out of the home are stuck with the perpetrator and are uh, uh, you know, re-traumatized uh, uh, through this period. Just moving on a little towards understanding who are these vulnerable groups. So we're not only looking at children and adolescents, uh, 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 you know, in all families, but, it, but we're also focusing on these very, very highly vulnerable groups where uh, children who already have chronic disorders, who already have certain medical ailments, uh, chronic disorders like uh, cancer or cardiovascular problems, uh, these are children who are more susceptible. So they already have ailments and going through the treatment and there is a high risk of COVID and also further stressors that family is going through and coping. Um, the other uh, vulnerable group is uh, children who are, as I mentioned before, facing adverse childhood experiences. So adverse childhood experiences are basically um, uh, involving neglect, abuse, abuse of any form, emotional, uh, physical, sexual abuse. Uh, uh, you're also looking at uh, uh, children who are raised in families with marital conflict, with the domestic violence, or one of their parents having substance uh, use or uh, substance dependence disorder. These are children who are highly, highly susceptible, and it is something that we need to uh, monitor and look at whether they are able to reach out for help when they need. Um, the other uh, group, uh, vulnerable group that we're looking at is also uh, children who are belonging to refugee groups, uh, children of the migrant laborers, as we have seen immediately post lockdown, the kind of uh, 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 the kind of stress, the adverse challenges they had to face. We're also looking at child laborers, child laborers who were probably uh, their only uh, uh, the only means for a family to earn a living through the child. That's also something that uh is uh you know a highly vulnerable group um the other group that you're looking at is also uh, uh groups of children who've had uh or family members having uh, pre-existing psychiatric disorders so for example having schizophrenia or other psychotic disorders or other psychiatric disorders where they are dependent on medication or any other family member who's having a uh, medical illness and that in turn affects the entire family's coping and also the child involved or exposed to that family member. Now, why have I highlighted coping is because when these are groups that are already uh, uh, marginalized or highly vulnerable, they are already going through immense stress. So when there is an additional form of, uh, it's almost like a, like a blow of stress again, it is going to result in a lot of dysfunctional coping uh, behaviors, which is something that as mental health professionals, we need to be aware of. And also at a community level, see that there is appropriate help that's given or means for them to reach out for help. I'm just gonna move on to, uh, highlighting or talking about certain basic things as, as how, how can parents and families help better. Um, 
The first thing is your child and your adolescent in the house is also exposed to the information that you are getting exposed to. So, for example, in the house, if the TV is running, uh, you know, for six, seven hours continuously with the news channel going on, uh, your child is also receiving as much information as you are about what is happening. And especially with children where uh, they may not be able to comprehend uh, as much as an adult can comprehend about certain medical aspects of what uh, what is happening around. So it's very important that as a parent, as a loved, uh, as a close person to the child, uh, whatever information you're sharing with the child is age appropriate, is first of all highly reliable, and uh, where you are not hiding any information, but very very clearly talking about what is happening around, uh, again, age appropriately. For an adolescent, it would be uh, different where you're able to directly involve them in what exactly is happening around and maybe also share a little bit of the medical information with, with adolescents. The second is uh, routine structure. So this is something that uh, my previous speaker has also spoken about. So apart from um, uh, the diet, sleep, uh, the important biological uh, mechanisms. We're also looking at, uh, uh, for children especially, uh, routine brings some form of uh, certainty, some form of security for the child. So when you are seeing a clear disruption of a daily routine, like for example, a working family where both the parents are working, they, you know, everything, weekdays are completely like a, a like work like a clockwork, where you have to get up on time. There's a domestic help that comes in, helps in certain areas. There's a nanny at home or the child goes to a play school or school. Everything is set in a certain routine. But when you see that the routine is completely disrupted, uh, it's quite chaotic. Some form of adapt to a, a new routine which uh, involves the family members. It also gives a certain sense of security uh, for the child during these uncertain times. So it's not only helpful biologically, but also psychologically. The other point is to, uh, I've, I've had a lot of uh, parents coming into the hospital where um, post lockdown, parents are working from home. And suddenly they are in panic because they are seeing their child uh, 24 seven, uh, you know, it's it's right under, the, it's, it's almost like they're right under a scanner because they're seeing all these behaviors which were absolutely unnoticed earlier. And they start coming up with a list of uh, problematic behaviors that the child is. It's also equally important that we are focusing on the good behaviors of the child as well. So as much as adults are uh, coping and trying to cope uh, through the stress, children and adolescents are also suffering and uh, facing stress in their own way. So it's important as parents or family members that we also highlight the good things that the child is able to do. Um, another important factor is family time. So uh, I think this is uh, uh, families which can uh, sort of um, adjust their routine in such a manner where uh, there is uh, time given as a family to spend together. So it could be something small as having meals together or maybe uh, uh, you know playing board games together or sharing activities or just sitting with a cup of tea or uh, uh, you know sitting around and discussing about what are the what are the things that are going around in uh, uh, you know in their lives or what, what did they face or just sharing stories so some form of family time where um, where they are able to spend time together uh, with a good quality time uh, so quantity doesn't matter. The quality of the family time is very important. Uh, the other important area is communication. Uh, how are we communicating with children and adolescents during this time? Whether is it becoming extremely instructional? You're constantly telling your child, wash this, uh, you know, uh, be safe, be careful, uh, use sanitizer. Have you washed your hands? So it's it's very, very uh, specific to just uh, the health. 
Are we also talking about the other stressors that the child is facing? Any queries that the child is having? So are you having an open space for the child to reach out if they are having questions of their own? Any other concerns? They may have concerns which are not even COVID related. It could be related to maybe somebody, uh, uh, maybe they heard about someone else having a bigger problem or uh, overhearing certain uh, parental stressors. So, Let's not assume that it's only about health, but it's also other stressors, academic stressors, their own adjustment problems. So whether are we providing that space for the child to uh, reach out to communicate or are we reaching out on in time to uh, communicate with the child? Now moving on to adolescence, because um, as adolescents, uh, uh, we know that uh, adolescence is a crucial time uh, in uh, developmental uh, period, and you're also looking that their looking at their needs are different than a child's needs. So, uh, very important that if if you see my talk is mostly about families and parents. We need to understand that we are set being role models for uh, uh, our children and adolescents around us. But are we able to cope effectively? Are we able to handle our emotions? How are we managing our stress? How are we able to communicate about our stress? So it's very important that as parents or as family members, are we setting appropriate role model uh, uh, for a child or a, for an adolescent to understand? So for example, if I have had a, a very terrible day and I'm going through a stress and I lash out and I, I sort of break things or I... Uh, 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 verbally abuse uh, someone else in the family, the child is observing this in terms of how is an adult coping with stress, right? So it's very important that we also focus on parents' mental health uh, because if they are having their own challenges, their own stressors, obviously, they also reach out because that's, again, for the betterment of the child and adolescent at home. Um, for adolescents, the communication changes. It's much more open and non-directive. So for a child, it's a little more in instructional, it's a little more direct communication. For adolescents, it's much more sensitive where you are able to provide that space for an open dialogue to discuss about things. Um, like I mentioned earlier, they can be focused on non-gadget indoor activities, uh, uh, not just uh, allowing your uh, adolescent to um, spend a lot of their time during the day on uh, their mobile phones or on, on their laptop. Uh, there are a lot of cases of uh, um, addiction uh, that's coming up uh, post lockdown, especially. So also focusing on non gadget indoor activities. Uh, another important area where we can engage adolescents and uh, also make them feel important in the family is if we can involve them in family responsibilities. There's also accountability where you're giving them a responsibility for which they are accountable, which for which they feel that they are important part of the family. So they are at an age where you can involve them in the decision making process of the family, certain challenges that the family is facing, you can involve them and have their viewpoints also shared in. You may not, you may not agree on their viewpoint or you may not follow on their viewpoint, but you are giving them them that space that they can be involved in the family decision making process or they are part of the family's uh, you know, routine and uh, important activities as well. The other very important area as adolescents that we do know is the peer uh, peers uh, support. Uh, so adolescents, it's, it's a very crucial time where they are building their identity, they're forming uh, uh, their uh, their self esteem. So whether uh, is there a proper access uh, to peers uh, during this time. So, for example, setting aside some time for your adolescent to reach out uh, to their uh, friends uh, through social media or a video call or so whether they are in touch with their friends and talking uh, to them as well. So that's also another area which we need to be careful and uh, are mindful about. Now, uh, all that being said, um, in my uh, professional experience and personal experience, I do find that there are certain pluses as well. 
um there have been kids who been bullied at school uh, when the school was open but now you see that they are much more confident with the schools uh, being shut down yes there is a need for them to learn how to cope better but you're also seeing that uh, they are their academic performance is improving because uh, there is no exposure direct to uh, to the bully uh, at school so uh, homeschooling has sort of in, uh, increased their self confidence and uh, self esteem uh you're also seeing that uh, there is a lot of uh, quality time uh, with family uh, this time to build on bonds uh, this time to reach out uh, to your child and adolescent and talk to them so there is an important time to build on family bonds as well uh the other uh, important point is um, i do find that uh, there's been a surge in a lot of parents coming in uh, uh being able to observe certain developmental delays in children because they've been at home and they've been able to spend time or see their child and somewhere get an idea that okay my child is having a certain developmental delay or something is wrong and then reaching out to a, a professional on time uh so they you can see that parents are uh, getting that time when they are at home yes it is stressful working from home but there is more exposure with your child to understand their development and also monitor that so uh, that's also a plus that i see we do have a lot of parents who've reached out uh, because they've been able to observe these uh, challenges in children um the other important area which my previous speaker has very beautifully spoken about um social responsibility and gratitude uh, a lot of her personal stories about kindness i think it's a very very important time where we can be a role model and also teach the child and the adolescent about uh, a social responsibility especially children or adolescents who are quite defiant and who don't want to wear a mask or who refuse to wash their hands or maintain hygiene you're also teaching them that it's not just for you but you're also doing for the safety of your family members for your loved ones at home so there is a sense of social responsibility that can be taught uh to the child and also gratitude about the things the privileges that you have which probably others or the, the, the unfortunate ones don't have and also involve them in certain social activities whether they can uh, sort of uh, help uh, out your neighbors in a way in providing certain resources or even simple acts of kindness and uh, goodwill is something that uh, children and adolescents can be involved in i just briefly talk about what kind of uh, 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 you know presentations are we seeing at the opd right now post um, uh, uh, you know the unlock uh, one uh, we are seeing um, a lot of uh, children who are uh, getting admitted uh, uh, with severe gastrointestinal symptoms or neurological uh, problems and then after a lot of detailed medical evaluations it turns out to be functional in nature uh and and on on detailed uh, on further psychological evaluation you are finding that there are a lot of stressors at home or there are a lot of emotional stressors which are leading to functional symptoms uh, we are also seeing few children with uh, uh transient tics uh, that's also something that we are observing again there are a lot of stressors involved in it um there were two kids with uh, learning uh, uh learning uh, specific learning disability and you could see that the precipitating factor was the uh, was the, um, the beginning of online classes or when they had to readjust to going back to online classes or uh, uh, you know the format of online classes so we also are seeing children with transient tics lot of defined behaviors children who are uh, at home uh, uh, aggressive behaviors not listening uh, to their family members like i mentioned before a uh, lot of academic stressors so you're also seeing children who are finding it very difficult who are uh, 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 who are um, having learning issues adjusting to this new learning format and then uh, those are children also uh, visiting uh, the hospital for an evaluation uh there have also been adolescents and children coming with uh, anxiety disorders specifically uh, ocd and panic um uh, there was um, there was an interesting uh, uh 
uh, a case that I would want to share about to just sort of highlight how different factors are looked into when we are seeing a child or an adolescent who's getting affected. Um, so, the, so this was about a young girl, maybe four or five years old, who was brought who was brought in with a lot of vague fears, uh, uh, which was very difficult to verbalize as well. Where she would, you know, shudder or she would uh, sort of shiver very easily to any loud noise or uh, uh, anyone even slightly raising their voice. So there were a lot of vague fears and anxiety symptoms that the child was presenting with. On detailed evaluation with the family, there were so many other factors that came up where the mother herself had an undiagnosed OCD uh, related to cleanliness and contamination. Um, they, she had significant uh, interpersonal uh, issues with her uh, own father who, because of the lockdown, uh, had to stay in their home and because he's aged, they are worried to send him back uh, uh, to um, his hometown. Uh, there is also her mother-in-law who's staying with the family, who is uh, chronically ill and who is uh, requiring timely medical support. So there are so many factors that are already, the environment that the child is in is already stressful. How is the family coping with it? What kind of a routine is being followed at home? And you're suddenly seeing these behaviors in a child which wasn't there before. So psychological evaluation becomes a very, very important uh, point. You can't just take a medical model. We have to look at the biopsychosocial aspect of uh, in, in a part of our evaluation. Uh, another thing is uh, one of the other areas that I missed on highlighting is also where uh, especially children who with mental retardation or pervasive developmental disorders or neurological disorders uh, you're also seeing where they were receiving a regular uh, therapy, behavioral therapy, and their early intervention therapies. That has significantly, uh, uh, you know, uh, the discontinuation of that therapy has significantly affected their development as well. So this is also, there are also these groups that are reaching out to the hospital to see in what way can we uh, provide uh, probably online uh, uh, early intervention therapy. But again, there are, it, it has its own challenges, but uh, I think that's also something that you're seeing uh, as being presented in um, the OPD. Uh, lastly, just I'll just take a few more minutes. Uh, I just would want to highlight about also when we are talking about enhancing mental health, we also need to understand the phases of the uh, the pandemic that we are going through. The preparation this is this is a general phase model of any pandemic that you take. There is preparation phase where you have uh, the lockdown, social distancing guidelines, uh, uh, whether there are provisions provided by the government, whether are they in place. Um, all that becomes a part of the preparation phase, of pre uh, preparing the medical services. Uh, the puncture maximum phase is the middle phase, which we are going through right now, where there is uh, a high incidence of cases, where there is high mortality rate, uh, where there's a lot of uh, pressure on the medical system. Um, and and we, are, we are grappling with the high mortality rate and high incidence of cases. Uh, the last phase, which we also need to start thinking about and be aware of is as we transition from eventually, because we're all working towards flattening the curve and every country, every state in our country is in a different phase. So um, the, the transition to normalcy, that is as the schools reopen or as we uh, sort of um, have proper medical treatment in uh, place, the guidelines in place, whether are we prepared and uh, uh, sufficiently uh, equipped to return to a normality phase. So that is also something that we need to be aware of. And, all, and other kinds of disorders that can come up as there is a readjustment that's happening. Lastly, I just would want to talk about when we're looking at child and adolescent mental health, we're looking at important uh, factors. So this is the parents and family, their mental health is equally, equally important. 
you're looking at school teachers and counselors school counselors they are also uh, uh, important adults who are a part of children and adolescents um, proper life skill teaching uh, identifying children at school or adolescents who are having psychological or emotional problems and uh, are are able to reach help the child or adolescent you're also having the mental health workers so the psychiatric nurses psychiatric social workers psychiatrists psychologists all of us form a part of the mental health the health work team pediatricians are also important because a lot of children uh, or uh, a lot of parents reach out to their uh, pediatrician when their child is showing certain uh, um, emotional or behavioral symptoms. So pediatricians also need to be very well aware of uh, uh, the mental health and timely referral uh, or networking to provide best help for the child or adolescent. Uh, at the large level, you have the public health care system, you have the policy makers, policy makers at the government level being aware of the uh, impact of what this is, ha uh, what has happened on a child and adolescence and, and preparing or making policies for the betterment. And at last, it's the community, the society, in terms of uh, especially stigma uh, that we're talk that we we kind of hearing a lot of stories about that as well, and we're seeing it around as well. Where if a child is or an adult is uh, tested positive, there's a lot of stigma that you're seeing. Whether as a community, whether uh, can we uh, be more mindful about how are we uh, treating others around us, and and that also plays a very important role in uh, providing that psychological and emotional support for your child. Um, so with this, I would want to um, sort of end my talk. Uh, I would like to thank the Kim's organization for giving me this opportunity and uh, I'm open for questions if there are any. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Akshaya. That was really helpful for me personally. There are a lot of questions because okay. participants have been posting a lot of questions. I understand their um, eagerness of, uh, you know, handling their own children in this, uh, during this pandemic. Um, but I would like to take three uh, questions from them, uh, right. if you permit me. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, Ms. Soumya Bonagiri asks, uh, children have three to four hours of online classes. They either use a mobile or a laptop or any other device. So, uh, do you think this is suggestible and can you please suggest me the tips to overcome this problem of screen time? Um, the, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, that's a very important question because here you we are finding that parents are very conflicted where uh, as as an organization as an institution there is a demand or there is an instruction that you do provide that screen time for your child to access education to access online classes so it is conflicting uh, but as uh, you've rightly said that there is a three four hours of online class that's been scheduled uh, it's also important to whether uh, if, if, if an adult or a caregiver is around the child to also be there when the child is attending the classes. I know it's difficult in a lot of households, but you can also supervise whether your child is attending classes. You are hearing a lot of these uh, uh, cases and they are coming to the hospitals where there is a very, you know, it's a very easy accessibility and switch off where the child has just turned off the uh, online class and is watching some other videos uh, but the parent there feels that okay the child is sitting in front of the screen so the child is present at the uh, you know attending the online class so all these issues are there but when you are I would go back to the routine structure that I was talking about. So when there is three to four hours of online uh, classes that you're doing whether can you uh, instead of uh, providing leisure activity of again providing the uh, you know a mobile gadget uh, for the child to play a video game or probably uh, you know access uh, videos on YouTube or uh, whether can that be substituted with physical uh, activities or indoor activities at home building up on hobbies so that is what we are looking at in terms of a routine.
Yes, Akshay, I think um, that goes really well, you know, to engage the children in physical activities more. But most of the time we have to play with the children, you know, which is uh, really, you know, energizing for the parents also, you know, mm -hmm. to go back to their childhood days and, you know, play with the kids. Mm -hmm. I feel that really helps them out. Uh, we have another question from Aishwarya Harish. Uh, she says, how to help children overcome mood changes during this pandemic as they spend a lot of time at home and engage more in sibling rivalry? Please help mm -hmm. me out. Um, firstly, I would uh, want to say that uh, it's very difficult to provide a plan uh, without actually, like I said uh, throughout my talk, uh, there's a proper evaluation that's involved in understanding what could be the factors that are influencing a child's behavior, right? So when you tell about mood symptoms, right, uh, you are focusing only on that anger outburst or you're focusing only on that anxiety symptom, but we also need to see what are the different factors on evaluation that are influencing the child. What stressors you may feel the child is going through may not be the stressors that the child is actually going through. Uh, that being said, uh, uh, the other thing that I was talking about earlier is whether as a family or as a parent who's close to the child, how are you managing your emotions? Are you available for the child to communicate, to have a non-judgmental communication with your child? Is the child feeling confident enough to talk about, even if they're feeling angry, are they able to talk about what is it that's making them angry? What is it that's irritating them? And how as parents are you handling that behavior? So. It, it does require uh, a, a proper uh, evaluation to understand what could be. So when we are looking at mental health for children, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just sort of extending this answer a little bit. You're also looking at customizing it for every child. So there is no one general rule. What I did give you points right now are very general rules but or general principles. But when you're looking at a child who is facing significant problems uh, or is not able to cope or is having a, um, a disorder, you're looking at customizing a plan or a therapy or a treatment plan for the child. Thank you, Akshia. Uh, there's another query from a parent who says, uh, can we say that excessive winking of the eyes uh, could be due to screen time or is it a stress related uh, symptom okay uh, that, that's a that's a, a good question. Uh, like I mentioned before, the case presentations in OPD, we are finding uh, a lot of children with these uh, facial movements, with certain body movements that haven't been observed before. Uh, I would advise, please go, uh, if possible, take your child to the pediatrician and have a teleconsultation or with the neurologist uh, to understand whether to rule out if it could be a neurological problem or are you looking at transient ticks. Uh, so that is something that I would uh, uh, advise the parent. Also, sometimes uh, parents would uh, want to take them to uh, uh, to an eye doctor and maybe you know rule out if there are any other eye related issues. Uh, I think I would definitely advise to get in touch with a medical professional and then uh, see if, if it could be psychological in nature. Okay, okay, that's that sounds great. Uh, there's another query, Akshaya. I'm sorry I'm taking your time, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> there are a lot of questions. Maybe I can direct them uh, to you to personally consult you. Um, and what's your opinion on Netflix documentary and social dilemmas? Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, thank you for that interesting question, uh, but I'm sorry it's not pertinent to the topic that we are talking about right now, yeah. but definitely, definitely in a larger sense, it is uh, very, very pertinent because uh, we are looking at a lot of dependency on social media.